Hello and welcome, my name is James Leach, I'm from Sony Professional Solutions, I'm joined today by Tom Crocker and we're here to talk to you about the latest firmware release for the PXW Z190 and Z280 camcorders. Uh, the recent release is related to the network functions for both of these camcorders. Um, perhaps you can give us a little update on what this actually means and what the customers can, can get from the firmware. Absolutely. So the networking is a really big issue these days because the way that we've built these cameras, and it's been evolving for quite some time, um, particularly if you look at the previous generation, the X200 and the X180, we had a few different network functions in there. And we got a lot of feedback and basically all of that's been included in these cameras here. Yeah. So it becomes a workflow question. What do you want your camera to be able to do? Uh -huh. And yeah. how do you want to access it? Mm -hmm. And where do you want to be when you access mm -hmm. it? And the answer is basically anywhere and everywhere yeah. for all of it. So okay. what we needed first was a really robust way of connecting it to the internet, whatever internet that might be. So you can see, for example, on the 280 here, we have two simultaneously connected 4G sticks. Um, very straightforward, allows us to put in subscriber SIMs and okay. connect it to a mobile network with two connections at once. Okay, so that's two USB ports on both camcorders. Two right? USB ports on both camcorders. That's a great time to point out that everything I talk about with the networking is exactly even between the two of them. Yes. Uh, they're basically the same. The only difference is that if you're the owner of a Z190, you'll need to get a license key to activate the networking okay. functionality. Understood. It comes out of the box on the 2 Yep. So, we've got a 4G way of connecting. Um, of course, 3G, whatever else you want, mobile network method of connecting there. Yes. Um, we've also got an inbuilt Ethernet port, okay. which is, of course, very, very straightforward. If yeah. you've got some Ethernet, plug it in, away it goes. Okay. Very, very simple. Another key thing is that we now have inbuilt Wi Fi within the body. In right, the okay. previous generation, we had an external dongle. You had a USB port, but you had to make a decision about how you wanted to do it. Right. Here we have Wi-Fi directly built in. That means everything's directly configurable from the camera menus. You search for and connect to a network like you do with any other device. So okay. it's very familiar to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so very, very straightforward. So whatever type of internet you've got, we've got a way to get you onto it. Right, okay. Then it's a question of what you want to do with it. Yeah. And this is where things get really, really interesting with these two cameras. So. Of course, we can stream in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. We've got MPEG-2 TS, if you want to do that, straight out of the camera. Very simple, something everyone's familiar with. We've also got our QoS codec, okay. uh, which we can send wherever we like in yeah. much, much higher quality, specifically designed for getting over net mobile networks effectively and safely and at a consistent quality. Okay. So that's built into them as well. File workflows are another place where we can really start to look at some exciting new ways of doing things. So both of these cameras record proxies from half a megabit in a range of different bit rates and resolutions all the way up to nine megabits. Right, okay. And that is a full HD, yep. 50i if you want mm -hmm. it to be progressive, mm -hmm. if you want, uh, and that's a file that's good enough that I've had some of uh, my news broadcasting yeah. customers actually broadcast yeah. it. Um, okay. it's, it's a nice looking file. So. If you combine that with a service like Sony C, which provides some amazing review and approve tools in mm -hmm. the cloud, um, if people want to try it out, it's sonymcs.com, and there's a free five gig account that you can get, try out, connect your camera up to. Uh, so for review and approve, remote workflows with people who want to look at files yeah. and maybe make some comments on them, another very simple way we can involve a proxy workflow into a main workflow, or just simply point at an FTP when you're done shooting, sit down, have a look at the files yeah. and relink it all afterwards because of course it contains all the right metadata. Now it goes further than that. We've got a service coming up. We're working with a number of our larger broadcast customers at the moment uh, called XD Cam Air. Right, okay. And that will really allow a lot to come. Um, so like I say, larger broadcasters first, but over the next year or two yes. that's going to be coming out for everyone. And that allows us to even do things like settings management, be okay. able to remote control from right, anywhere okay. to anywhere, um, and basically monitor where a camera is, what it's doing, how it's mm -hmm. working, yep. and basically turn every resource within the camera that you might want as part of a workflow into an accessible resource for whoever needs it at whatever time. So there's some very, very exciting things coming, and if people aren't using any wireless functionality at the moment, it's a great time to start thinking about how they might, yeah. because over the next few years it's going to become more and more common. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much, Tom. If you'd like to find out a little bit more information about these cameras, please check out pro.sony. Thank you very much for watching. See you again soon.